We're going to close out this course by learning how to solve quadratic equations. A quadratic equation is one where we have an x squared term, but no higher powers of x. Um, we say that a quadratic uh, equation is one that can be written in this form, ax squared plus bx plus c, as long as a is not equal to 0. So we have to have that x squared term. Um, we call this the general form of the quadratic equation. In example 7.1, we've got a couple equations here. 4x squared minus 3x plus 5 equals 0 is already in that general form. Um, the other one is quadratic. It's not written in that general form, but it can be written in that general form. So we start with 12t equals 18, plus, uh, 18 minus 3t squared. Um, and we could just rearrange it, you know, group all the terms on one side and write it either in this form or in that form, depending on uh, what side of the, the equation we gather all of our terms on. Um, so what makes a quadratic really is the, the presence of that squared term, right? Your, your x squared or your t squared term. Um, there's three methods we can employ to solve a quadratic. We're going to learn about all of them in this chapter. Really, there's two methods. Um, you know, the factoring and completing the square. Uh, the quadratic formula is a formula we can derive by completing the square. So it's kind of an extension or a result of completing the square. Um, we're going to learn how to solve, how to use all three of these techniques to solve a quadratic. And we're going to start by factoring. Um, and, and really the backbone, the foundation of solving by factoring is theorem 7. Um, if I multiply two numbers together and I get zero, the only way that could have happened is if one of your factors was zero to begin with. So the way we use that to help us solve a quadratic is first, make sure that you've rearranged it so that it's you've got your uh, an expression set equal to zero. Then try to factor that expression. And if it will factor, you can find the solutions by setting each factor equal to zero and solving. So um, our very first example here, um, this is already set equal to zero, so I'm all set there, and then I just want to factor this expression. Uh, you'll notice there's a common factor of t in both of these terms, so I'm going to take that out. And get 3t minus 2. Now I have a product set equal to zero, and the only way that happens is if t is 0, right, if that factor is 0, or if 3t minus 2 is 0. If t is 0, well, that's one of our solutions. And then 3t minus 2, that's a linear equation, so we'll just solve that. Uh, let's see, we're going to add 2 to both sides. And then divide by 3. So t equals 0 and t equals 2 thirds, those are the solutions to this quadratic. We'll find that a lot of quadratics have two solutions. Um, let's try another one. Uh, we want to solve this equation for x. It is already set equal to 0. You want to make sure that you check that first, and if it's not equal to 0, you got to fix it so that it is. Um, this is set equal to zero, which means we are ready to factor. And there's no common factor, but we can unfoil this. Um, an x and an x, plus two, plus three. So now we have a product, x plus two times x plus three is equal to zero. We're gonna find solutions where each of these two factors is equal to zero. So this means that either x plus two is zero, or x plus three is equal to 0, and then solving gives us x equals negative 2, and x equals negative 3. As with any equation, you can always check your answers by plugging it in for x and seeing that uh, equality holds. All right, we're going to do, um, let's do another one here. Uh, 2x squared minus 7x plus 5 equals 2. You'll notice this is not equal to 0. 
But we're going to just address that first. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. So we get 2x squared minus 7x plus 3 equals 0. And then we just got to try to unfoil this. So let's see, a 2x squared, 2 is prime, so I'm only going to have a 2x and an x. And then, you know, 3 is prime. So I know I've got to have a 3 and a 1. i got to figure out where each of those goes. Also notice in the middle it's a negative 7x, so this will be um, a minus and a minus to multiply to give me that positive 3. And then I think it's 2x minus 1 and x minus 3 will do the trick here. 2x times negative 3 is negative 6x, negative 1 times x is negative x, and that gives me the um, uh, that gives me the negative 7x in the middle. So now I have a product set equal to 0. Um, now I'm going to just finish by setting each of the factors equal to 0, just like we did in the last couple of examples. So this means that uh, either 2x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x minus 3 is equal to 0. We'll just solve each of these equations. So I'll start with the one on the left. We get 2x equals 1, and then we can divide both sides by 2. And we get x equals a half. And then over on this side, of course, we're just going to add 3 to both sides, so we get x equals 3. All right, let's do another. Um, this one, you know, looks quadratic, so we have that 5x squared term, and then we have like a kind of a product as one of our terms on the other side. This is definitely not in general form, so we got to start by getting it in general form, and I'm going to do that by uh, distributing this x. Once everything is sort of expanded out, then we verify it is actually a quadratic. Um, it's possible that after you multiply some stuff, you end up with, like, say, an x cubed term. Um, so we want to make sure that that's not the case. So we're going to uh, distribute that x. Uh, we get 5x squared equals 7 plus 11x minus x squared. And um, now uh, this is quadratic. x squared is the highest power of x that we've got. We want it set equal to 0. So you know, I'm going to um, just subtract 5x squared from both sides. So I got 0 equals 7 plus 11x minus 6x squared. Now we could go ahead and try to unfoil it from here, um, and it can definitely be done. I don't know about you, but I, I definitely am in the habit of and am better at factoring these quadratics if um, I'm, if I've got my x squared term written first, and it's a positive x squared term. So I'm going to just um, do make one more step before I start factoring. I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 1. On the left side, that's still 0. On the right side, I'm going to distribute the minus 1, um, and I'm going to just write the x squared term first. So... If I distribute that minus 1, I get a positive 6x squared, and then minus 11x, and minus 7. And now I can set about trying to factor. This one's a little bit trickier to factor because 6 is not prime. That means we've got a couple of options. I could either do a 6x and an x, or uh, we could have a 2x and a 3x. But 7's prime, so that'll help us out. So I know I need a 1 and a 7, and then the question is, what will give us the, it's a minus 11x and it's a minus 7. So one of these has to be uh, a minus and one's a plus, right? So either minus 1 plus 7 or plus 1 minus 7. So maybe you want to pause the video and see if you can work out the factoring before I tell you what I found. Um, but I was able to factor this as 2x plus 1, 3x minus 7. And then we could do a quick check here. This gives us a plus 3x, and this gives us a minus 
14x, and that's the negative 11x that we need in the middle. So now I have a product set equal to 0, which means it's all over but the shouting. We're just going to set each vector equal to 0. And now we can solve each of these linear equations, which we're, you know, really quite good at by this point. So we'll subtract 1. here and then divide by 2. You get negative a half. And then over here we'll add 7. And divide by 3. And these are our two solutions. In all of these examples, we found that we get two distinct solutions. That happens a lot uh, with quadratic equations, but not always. You'll never have more than two solutions. Um, as it happens, you'll find that with quadratic equations, you end up with either two solutions, like we found here, or maybe one solution and sometimes no solution. Um, we're going to do, uh, I'm going to do th three more kind of bonus examples that aren't uh, already in the um, set of lecture notes. So grab a sheet of paper um, and we're going to do a couple extra examples. All right, so um, in the first sort of additional example, uh, we've got here a pretty standard quadratic. It's already set equal to zero and um, we're going to solve by factoring. So we start the process. It's a, it's a monic quadratic, meaning this is just a 1x squared. So um, when you factor this, we need an x and an x. It's a plus 9. The middle term is negative, so it'll be a minus minus. And I think minus 3 and minus 3 will work. So notice what happened. We factored this. We got two of the same factor, right? I mean, if we continue the way we've been going, right, we say this means either x minus 3 is 0 or x minus 3 is 0. We only get one solution. Right, so um, x equals 3 is our only solution. In a scenario like this, right, we get two of the same factor. We say that this quadratic has a, a repeated root. Um, so uh, we didn't actually get two distinct solutions. We had one repeated root. Um, in, this, in, uh, in this example, um, you take a look at this, and I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, that's not a quadratic, and you are absolutely right. We have an x cubed term. This is not a quadratic. But we can apply the same principle to this um, equation because it is set equal to 0, and there's a common factor of x in all three terms. So I'm going to factor out that x. And um, then I have x times this quadratic factor, um, which we can unfoil. So we had a 2x and an x. And I don't know if you want to pause and try to work out this factoring before I tell you what I found. Um, this will factor as 2x minus 3, x plus 5. Now we have a product of three factors set equal to zero. But, you know, that theorem, theorem 7 in the beginning of this section, um, that applies no matter how many factors you have. You know, if I have three factors equal to zero, that only happens if A is zero or B is zero or C is zero, right? Like, and I could have a product of five factors, and that product is only zero if one of the factors is zero. So we can apply that here to the three factors. So this means either x is 0, and that's one of our solutions, or 2x minus 3 is 0, or x uh, plus 5 is 0. And then we solve these linear equations. And it's just like all the other ones. 
So we get 2x equals 3, divide by 2. Get x equals 3 halves. And then over here, if you just subtract 5, we get um, x equals negative 5. So here's an equation that has three solutions, three distinct solutions. Um, notice it was an x cubed uh, equation, right? So it wasn't quadratic. Um, we ended up getting three uh, distinct solutions here. All right, one more to go. Um, take a look at this equation. And again, I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking that's not a quadratic equation. And you're right. But it is an equation that we know how to approach, right? In the last chapter, we learned how to solve equations like this. And our first step was always Let's identify the LCD and multiply through by that least common denominator. So in this case, the LCD is the product x times x plus 2. This first term is a, is a 2 over 1, right? So the LCD is just we need the factor of x. We need the factor of x plus 2. So now we're going to multiply through by x times x plus 2. So um, in the middle, the x's cancel. Over on the right, the x plus 2's cancel. What we are left with is 2x, x plus 2, minus parentheses x plus 2, equals 3x. Um, let's expand this out, see what it looks like. We're going to distribute that 2x in the first product, so we get 2x squared plus... 4x um, minus x minus 2 equals 3x. And um, this is quadratic. I can see I've got the x squared term. I've got no other higher powers of x appearing. Um, we're going to subtract 3x so that it's equal to 0. So now we've got 2x squared. And then, let's see, we've got 4x minus 3x is uh, x minus x is 0x. So we've got no x's. Um, 2x squared minus 2 equals 0. Uh, we could factor this. In fact, I'm going to take out the common factor of 2 first. And then x squared minus 1, that's a difference of squares. We know how to factor that. Um, and then we get uh, what x equals, or this means that x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x plus 1 is equal to 0, so x equals 1, or x equals minus 1. We do a quick check in these in these equations. So so we didn't start with an, a quadratic, but after we cleared denominators, we ended up with a quadratic, right? This equation up here, this is quadratic, which we could see after we wrote it in standard or sorry in general form. Um, we have to make sure, as always, if we're solving an equation with fractions, that our solutions don't lead us to divide by 0 when we plug them back into the original equation. And we're all set there, right? The only values that would make us divide by 0 are if x is 0 or if x is negative 2. And those, uh, neither of those was a solution that we found.